What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to chat about this observation that I've had that ranks below black belt fade over time. What does that mean? Well, you're going to have to stick around to find out. We're going to chat about it. If you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, founder and host of Martial Arts Radio, joined by my often co-host, producer, good friend, uh, training partner, road trip buddy. <laughs> There's a lot of titles that, that you've uh, Andrew. Thank you. Andrew room, Adams. Thank room, you. Roommate when we go away places. Roommate, <laughs> roommate, uh, meal companion. Yeah. <laughs> um, general all around great guy. I try. I try. How's it going, Jeremy? Good. Good. Thanks for being here. Now, if you happen to be new to Whistlekick and all the things that we do, might I suggest that you visit whistlekick.com where we have so many things, all the things that we're doing. Did you know that we're rolling out a new training program pretty much every month right now? Uh, I know because I'm writing them and they take a lot of work. Uh, the team knows because I'm constantly bugging them with, hey, what about this or feedback or whatever else? But there are so many things over there and you can buy a program or a shirt or any number of things in our store. And if you are a listener to the show, you get to save 15%. Podcast 1.5 saves you 15% on anything there. And while you're there, just check out all the other stuff, the events that we've got going, uh, content in the blog, and just so much stuff. Martial Arts Radio has its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, because we put out two episodes each week, so it's a lot of stuff, so it needed its own space. And if you go over there, what are you going to find? Well, every single episode we've ever done, you're going to find that. You're also going to find a way to sign up for the newsletter or to tip us, uh, read transcripts of the episodes, lots of great stuff there. And if you want to support us, if our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, our goal to get everyone in the world to train for six months, if that means something to you, let me give you three things that you can do right off the bat. You could buy something, like I already said. You could share an episode with somebody. Hey, did you check out this episode? If they did, maybe you can talk about it. If they didn't, maybe you can get them to listen to it, and then you can talk about it. But we also have a Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. It's the place to go. And if you're watching the video, you can see Andrew being ridiculous, which I love. Patreon, for two bucks a month, you know what episodes are coming up on the show. We don't release that information anywhere else. But you also get bonus content. We recently had an episode that we had to redo, but it was for technical issues. Well, there was still some good and original stuff in that first recording. We released it to the Patreon folks. We do a lot for them. They do a lot for us. So thank you to all of you. And if you are a Whistlekick super fan, if you are part of our family, might I suggest you check out the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. We update it weekly. Andrew. Jeremy. When I shared this poorly formed thought with you, ranks below black belt fade over time. Something that I jotted to myself in my email a couple weeks ago. You you responded stronger than I expected you to. Yeah, it was it was not something that I had thought of until mm. ten minutes ago when you told me for the first time. Little peek behind the curtains for for you listeners and viewers that uh, you know sometimes we just come up with these ideas yes. uh, on the fly. Um, and it wasn't something I had thought of, but it may, as I thought about it in just a quick couple of mm. seconds here, I thought when I went to the current school that I'm training at, I had a third degree black belt in Shotokan and my instructor mm -hmm. said to me, you are a black belt. Like, I'm not going to take your black belt away from you. Like mm -hmm. you, and, and you know, I, we're, this topic is not to discuss how you should handle other students in school. Sure. We, we've, we've talked about that but, on but the he, show. He before. said, you know, I, uh, you are fine if you would like to wear your black belt because you are a black belt. Right. But I also in college trained in Gojiru. Mm. And that's what I, I first started training in. And when I was in college, I got my EQ or uh, in Japanese uh, systems or Okinawan styles, it would be the rank right before black belt. So a brown belt with uh, a stripe on the end of the belt. But I don't consider myself a brown belt in Gojiru. Right. I mean, I, I, I earned one. Mm -hmm. 
I, I probably, if I looked hard enough, I think I might even find the certificate that says I got it. But I don't consider myself a brown belt in Gojiru. I consider myself a black belt in the styles that I have rank in, but not in Gojiru. Yeah. There's, there's something here, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. And that's part of why uh, when I gave you, when I, when I shared this idea with you, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. Because what you're talking about is a very common occurrence. It certainly doesn't isn't what happens everywhere that someone will say, oh, you have earned your black belt in maybe a style that's similar, maybe not even similar at all as I've experienced. You are a black belt, right? Like that definitive, as if it's a standard, yeah. as if yeah. by crossing that threshold, you can never go back. And yet I've witnessed in plenty of schools lower ranks are handled very differently sometimes well we want you to start over at white belt sometimes it's um you know we'll why don't you come in and and take class for a month or two and then we'll test you and kind of evaluate you and see where you're at yep, yep. and rank you but even in the schools that i've participated in where black belts are asked or encouraged or giving the choice to start over as white belts they are still often treated as black belts, you know, there, there are sometimes these, these honorariums that occur with, well, you know, we're going to have all the black belts stand up in the front of the room and, you know, yes, you're wearing a, a yellow belt right now, but you've earned a black belt. So come stand with us. Right. Like I've seen that. You've probably seen some stuff. Like it, that. It, it's happened in, in our school, in the school that I'm in now, yeah. um, at you, a friend of the show, Abby has, mm -hmm. uh, a, black belt a third degree black belt in taekwondo but in our school she chose of her own volition to start over at white belt um she was given the option to, to keep wearing her black belt but she wanted to go to white which is fine and so she's been slowly progressing through the ranks but when we have a test she sits up on the black belt quote-unquote board with the others and you know she's encouraged to wear her black belt for that type of uh uh scenario within that in that case yeah and, and that's a great example because you know it's it's a recognition that you have achieved some some manner of standard you know this black belt standard that we all argue about that it, there is no standard no nope. because nope. it's different everywhere but there's some i think intuitive recognition of accomplishment in there and it makes me wonder right because we we've had the conversation about but at length on this show, it comes up in various ways that a black belt here is not a black belt there. And I believe very strongly that that's actually a good thing. You know, nobody should, should be able to dictate, well, this is exactly what a black belt is because yep. it leads to all these problems. But we, we still at a really fundamental level want to recognize that accomplishment. And I think this goes even further into the um, the appropriate analogy that a black belt is like an academic degree. Mm. Yeah, you know, no, I nobody ever nobody ever brags. Well, you know, I I, I took uh, philosophy one hundred and eight. You know, but they'll say I have my bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in philosophy. Yep, right. And I, I just, I keep wrapping my head around that comparison uh, because credits might transfer in the same way that we talked about, well, we're going to evaluate you and see where you fit in in our system. And, and I know that there are schools that do that, even if you trained in the same thing, even if you're in the same lineage, yep, yep. they want you to kind of test in and see where they are in the same way that a lot of people might do when attending higher education. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a good point about the education because no one no one typically walks around saying, I did a year and a half of college and then I left. But if they do, they're usually like, uh, you know, self-deprecating. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, it's it's a regret or something. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So the question is, is this, to me, is this by design? or by accident, or is it just natural law that this is going to happen? And 
if it is something that we can adjust, should we? I think it leans more towards accident and just an happenstance. I don't think it's by design. I, I don't. I, I agree. I, I don't think anybody's out there doing that. But I do believe it is a consequence yes. of the way we talk about black belts. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about that just as an aside to the audience. We've talked about this, my, my personal feelings. And I, Andrew, I think you agree with me that by saying black belt is the standard, it creates some consequences, this being one of them, that because we say it's a standard, it becomes a standard and we don't want to compromise that standard. Yeah. Yeah. So here's so here's the thing to think about. Uh, when when I got my brown belt in college, I would have I would have been, let's say, 21. Mm -hmm. uh, early 20s. Let's say I had kept training and got my black belt at 22 and then quit training. And 15, 20 years later, I decided to start training again. I'm still a black belt, right? I got a black belt. But let's go back a year, 2000, in, you know, when I was 21, I got a brown belt and I stopped training for 21 years and start training again. I'm not a brown belt. Like this, that's a hypothetical question, like rhetorical question. Like what is, what is really different between the brown belt and the black belt? Here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm trying to come up with, as we're talking, I'm trying to come up with equivalencies outside of martial arts because quite often it's easier for us to right, find right, examples. Right. And I'm thinking about this and it comes down to title. Mm. We treat black belt as a title the way we would treat yeah. sabonim or professor or renshi or sensei within the martial arts sifu in a way that we don't treat other ranks, colored belt ranks, yep. those yep. don't tend to carry that same, uh, how do you say the word? T-I-T-U-L-A-R, titular? Titular, yep. Titular, okay. Mm -hmm. That we do, that don't seem to carry that titular connotation. And it, it's, it's funny, because there, there are a lot of schools where um, you earn a black belt, you're automatically, it carries some title. But plenty of other schools, it's very separate. I've known schools that, you know, you could be third, fourth, or fifth degree black belt and your your title is awarded differently, that someone might have higher rank and someone else might have higher title. Yeah. Because and, title tends to be more teaching, and, whereas rank may not be related to teaching in that school. Go ahead. Yeah, and and my experience is, is predominantly Japanese and Okinawan styles. Mm -hmm. And even within those styles, there is a word for anyone who has a black belt. There is a separate word, whether you've been mm. given a title for having your rank or not in the Japanese and Okinawan uh, uh, disciplines. If you have a black belt, regardless of, of what rank black belt it is, you are Yudansha. Yudansha yeah, is anyone, anyone who has a black belt. And so, uh, and there may be a term for anyone who doesn't have a black belt, but I don't know it, and I've been training a long time. So Udancha is yeah. one that everyone knows. Like, oh, you know, this meeting is only for Udancha. Like, it's mm -hmm. not only for black belts. It's like it's it has its own title already. So that's yeah. interesting. I, I think thought of that. I think there's also something interesting in that the way most schools, regardless of system, right? I mean, we see this in pretty much all styles of karate, taekwondo. I see it in a lot of other areas. The belt color doesn't change. You just add stripes. Mm -hmm. Whether it's figurative or literal, you add stripes. Yep, yep. But the belt remains black. And for plenty of people, you know, if, if you train at a school where, you know, that black belt shows up somewhere five, six, seven, four, ten, whatever years, but you train for decades. I mean, I, I wear the same black belt most of the time that I have had since I was 16. Mm -hmm. I don't know too many people who wear the same belt for 30 years doing something else, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a good, um, you know, there's, so I guess the question is, 
the big question to me is, should we, should, should this be an on off switch at black belt or should it, uh, should it be more gradual? Should the situation you articulated with yourself at EQ at that just before black belt stage, should that have been treated similar were this case to come up at, you know, to, to the way a black belt might be handled hmm. or should it be its own set of rules? And I don't know that there's an answer. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I think it, it, I would agree. I don't think there is a definitive black and white. This is the way it should be. And, and, you know, we at Whistlekick try pretty hard to not make those types of distinctions regardless because right. everything is nuanced. Um, and I think your, so again, using me as an example, uh, I don't consider myself a brown belt in Gojuru. If I were to start training in a Gojuru school, they might ask, do you have any prior training? And I would tell them mm -hmm. what I have. Right. Um, but I wouldn't expect to wear a brown belt. But my knowledge of Gojiru is way more than a, a white belt. Even though I haven't trained, I haven't trained Gojiru. Let's see, I'm 48 years old now. I was 21. It's been 27 years, right? But my knowledge of Gojiru, just because I've done so much other training, is way, 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 way higher than someone who steps in for the first day, right? And even the way you're talking about it, and I don't know that you realize it, you're talking about it in the way that we might talk about academic pursuits, mm -hmm. right? Well, I, I didn't, you know, I took all of these classes. I learned this information. Yep. Much of it has faded. I could relearn it faster than I learned it the first time. And I still remember a lot. And you have parallel pursuits that support it. Yep. It's kind of like if you earn a master's degree in engineering and you go back to take your you know maybe you had started undergrad in physics you know if you want to finish up your degree in physics and, and go on for a master's degree in physics there's going to be some overlaps yeah. and some core requirements will carry but regardless you're gonna be able to get there faster than you would otherwise hmm. okay you know, this is one of those episodes where we talk through some things and it doesn't come to a nice, neat bow at the end. No. Uh, I want the audience to understand that Aaron Drew and I are, are talking through our thoughts on this, but this one is wide open. And, and if you look at this, go ahead. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. Like you, yeah. What after you listen or watch this episode, if your gears have started to turn, mm. A, that's a great thing. Yeah. Um, We'd, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on how they feel. You know, if, if for example, you determine that I'm a, I was a brown belt, but because it's been 27 years, I can no longer call myself a brown belt. At, first off, I don't, that's fine with me. I don't really care. But what if I had gotten my black belt and stopped training for 27 years? Did that knowledge really fade as well? And like, there, there's no right or wrong answer. I, I, it is just stuff to think about. It makes you ponder. I, I, th I think the, 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 my big takeaway from our conversation is the idea that we treat black belt as a title and we do not treat lower ranks as titles. They are uh, reflections of current understanding. Mm. I like when we do this. Yeah, this is fun. it makes you ponder. I, I really I like it does. that too. As Arsenio Hall would say, things that make you go, hmm. Oh, I would, when you said Arsenio Hall, I was like, where are you going? I don't think <laughs> hyping up the crowd, <laughs> I don't really think that's going to play oh, well. No, but he, hey, you know, what He else? had a segment on his show that was things that make you go, hmm. I, I do recall that. Yes. Hmm. Audience, if you enjoy what we talk about here, if you enjoy these shows, if you enjoy thinking, and that's part of why you come around when we record, I hope you'll consider sharing the episode and supporting us in the wide variety of ways that you have available. Join the Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. Hey, sometimes stuff doesn't go right, and you just have to make the best of it. We're not going to re-record this. It was too good. We're not going to get it this good again. I know we won't. 
a uh, couple other things you might consider doing. Uh, seminars. You could have me in for a seminar. I could bring Andrew with me. We could bring some of the other folks who are part of the Whistlekick Core team. They'll probably show up anyway, whether you want them to or not. Uh, we, we, we've got a good group. But if you want to have me in uh, to offer up my, I think, semi-unique blend of conversation, contemplation, and training, would love to do that with you and your students. And also consider that we offer consulting. The entire team here gets involved in some way or another on our consulting stuff. And whether you're looking to grow your school by numbers or by dollars or some other method, don't be afraid to reach out. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you have feedback for Andrew, Andrew at whistlekick.com. And our social media is at whistlekick. Until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, have a great day. Have a great day.